Right, up next uh, to Morning Rush uh, Sport. And uh, yeah, uh, Zimbabwe will be looking uh, to reclaim old glories uh, when uh, Team Zimbabwe takes on Uruguay uh, in a Davis Cup World Group 2 playoff tie uh, next week. And the big news is that we have a new uh, Davis Cup captain, and uh, that is Takanyi Garanganga. And he's joining us as our guest here on Morning Rush Sport. Uh, good morning, Takanyi. And Welcome to ZTM Prime. It's good to see you again. Thank you. I know <laughs> good, we had a good to see you. Yesterday, You're looking nice it. and comfortable. I wish yeah. I was a sports person. I'd come dressed in my tech. Yeah. <laughs> so to, especially with this weather. But first of all, uh, congratulations Thank on you. being named uh, team captain right. for the Davis Cup team. I know you've been part of that team for a long time, but yeah. just walk us through. You know, how you got the news and how you felt when you did get that news. No, thank you once again for congratulating me. I think I got the news maybe early on in the year, like in January. So I was pretty excited about it. I mean, I was recovering from my right knee surgery. And now I had been talking to the team in the past two or three times they've played. And they're like, you know what, we'd still like you to continue with us. And the association asked me to take part in the whole organization. And I was excited about it. So it's a good opportunity to work with the team again. But uh, you spoke about that surgery. Obviously, that's probably having an effect on your playing career. Does it mean it's over for you from the playing front, or it's just <laughs> you're still in rehab? No, I, you, no it's, it's still rehab. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, initially I heard it in 2020 during the COVID. I uh, went to Amsterdam in the following year, and then they told me I needed to get another one on my right knee. So I had it in November, end of November. So now I'm actually in the process of rehab. So that's where I'm at mentally. So gradually getting back to it. But well, Zimbabwe has a very rich uh, Davis Cup history. I think right. for most, uh, you know, observers, when they yeah. think of the Davis Cup, we think of the Black Brothers, Kevin Elliott. Yeah. We go back to the 90s, yeah. you know, right. when we were playing. We, I think we hosted the U.S. here. Yes, yes. Uh, Agassi and Co. came here. But, you know, it seems like, you know, we've been up and down. You know, we right. recently just got promoted back uh, to Group 2. You know, what do you think has been happening with our game, you know, since we reached those uh, dizzy yeah. heights back in the, that's a 98, somewhere yeah, around there? Yeah, I think just mainly it's just the continuation. You know, we were at like a, a good stage tennis-wise. And then after that, there was not really a, a, the greatest development structure in terms of, you know, um, when I was playing, I could have been sitting on the bench at that time, you know, getting used to what's going on, getting used to what the world tour is like outside Davis Cup, because that's an important part. Because I think people focus on Davis Cup so much, but there's an ATP World Tour that you play throughout the year so that you can get into Davis Cup World Ranking and, you know, be in a good position to always stay up there. So that was lacking, just the connection between the ATP Tour and Davis Cup. So now we're trying to introduce a lot more of that. The association had a new development uh, strategic plan that they have, and we'll try and implement it as best as we can and move from there. Yeah, because, I mean, you, you mentioned playing on the ATP Tour, because I know, you know, we'd have uh, Cara Black yes, winning yes, Grand yes, Slams, absolutely. Byron winning Grand Slams, absolutely. and we haven't really heard much, you know, in terms of the individual players. Yeah. You, obviously, you've been on the circuit as a Zimbabwean, you know, yeah. coming from here, playing domestically, going to the States, yeah. and then, you know, playing college tennis. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, that that graduation from, yeah. you know, coming from Zim, going to the States, and then turning pro, yeah. how difficult or challenging is it to break through and reach those heady yeah. heights that we need to go? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an easy task, to be honest. I actually didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. I went straight from high school to the professional circuit. Okay. So that information is vital because you have to know, like, easiest way. You play juniors, you can get to experience the junior Grand Slam, US Open, Wimbledon, that whole stream as a junior. Then from then, you can kind of have an idea of what that vibe is like at the high level. Then you can decide to go to college. So I decided to go to university and professionally. So that continuation happened. I started getting on the ATP tour. I won a few minor league tournaments at junior pros. And then um, at that time, I feel like I could have done it earlier. So that was the really setback on why the nation is where it is now. And if we can introduce those ATP pathways from like 15, 16, it will make things a lot easier. But it's an expensive sport, so you have to understand the budgetary constraints that the nation has as a whole. So there's a lot of work that's done just not as an individual, but the nation and, you know, has to probably play a big part in that, educating tennis. Right. The country recently hosted uh, the Southern Africa Regional Junior Championships. Yeah. I think those were for under-16 and under-14s. Yeah. But I remember speaking to some of the coaches as well, yeah. and one of the, the, the observations was that, yes, we can 
take players at these international tournaments, but apparently we're not doing enough uh, yeah. on the home front to make sure that they can actually be competitive when they go to those tournaments? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of work, like I said, because it goes to educating the parents that they know that this is the pathway kids can take and then the coaches as well need to kind of have that exposure of what high level tennis is like. Um, even the organization as a whole needs to understand how other federations work to develop those type of players. So it's not just one ended answer, you know, I mean, the organization, the coaches, the parents. So it's like something that's, it's a, I don't want to say it's a long, long term thing, but if we can just start feeding that information out as soon as possible so people get acquainted to all of that. Oh, no, obviously, as the Davis Cup captain, you deal with the tail end as players who are already right. professionals, you know, who are now maybe trying to break into the top 200. Yeah. But like going back and thinking about your journey coming up, mm -hmm. what do you think we need to go back and look at in terms of creating that pipeline mm -hmm. where players, first of all, we have uh, the players and mm -hmm. then put them into those systems all the way into the professionals and hopefully yeah, yeah. get us to competitive again. I think the first thing, because the professional, like the tail end, that's mean you've been doing work for like 10 plus years, like playing on the tour to be at that high level. But I think we have sort of like a good development structure in terms of the International Federation creating like a pathway for junior Grand Slams. So when they can first get a peek at that, when they're like four, 15, 16, 17, and they're playing junior Grand Slams, where we have to develop the junior players to have like that top 20, top 10 junior ranking, then that can start, you know, the oiling the pathway to be like high level. So the first thing is to really educate the, fa the tennis nation that we can play junior Grand Slams. After that, they have a view of what's happening, then we go from there after that. But we might have some parents probably watching at home. Yeah. They're probably thinking to themselves, you know, tennis, we've seen it, yeah. you know, it's, it's an expensive sport, you yeah. know, there's a lot that goes into it, right. you know. Uh, as maybe for someone from a less privileged area, from the yeah. rural areas, you know, how can they be facilitated so that they can have access to, to the game as well? I think there's a strategic plan that the association has that they've started working on since last year. So now that we'll have to be informing the provincial level, like how do we really get them into coming to like national squads and um, the national high school tennis, you know, primary school tennis, that's like the first part. So we would, I would advise the nation to, you know, go into schools again, and then the parents can go to schools and ask, oh, how do we get our kids into like school tennis for a start, just to introduce the game. From then on, once we give them the information that they need. So the first part, school tennis, and then um, in the rural areas, I think that's like the, the entry level at school tennis. All right, let's come back to the Davis Cup. Exciting yeah. times uh, for Zimbabwe. Right. The team was announced yesterday yeah. uh, with you as the captain. Can you tell us some of the other uh, members who were in that team and what you think our chances against right. Uruguay are? Um, we have Benjamin Locke, who'll be playing one, uh, Mithuli Sibanda, um, Courtney Locke, uh, uh, Tine Baza, and then we'll have the junior development squad, which is Ron Mutisi, Shane Tapera, Tapo Mondagara, and uh, there's one more kid. What's his name? Uh, Tapo Mondagara. I, I mentioned that. Yeah, you mentioned it. Okay. <laughs> so then that's the the main roster. Uh, sorry, Thompson Tomo. That's the one. So that's there'll be the eight of us. So we have a good chance. I mean, the guys are still fresh starting the year, so there's not really so many tournaments that happen. So mentally, they are like excited about you know coming back home and playing. Uruguay is the team that's been playing on the clay court a lot. I don't know if you're aware of the hard courts that we use here and the clay courts that yeah. we use in Spain. I mean, in uh, in South America and most of Europe. So that fast space, speed and then the altitude is something that will give us an advantage and the guys are fresh, they're home. We normally have a great supporting crowd, you know, I think you know the history of Davis Cup. So that excitement should, you know, put us in a great position to, you know, uh, be in a winning position with Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay ranked uh, 42, 42, yeah. we 67, about 25. Right. Should we read too much into that? Or? No, I mean, look, it's Davis Cup. It's three matches. You know, it's three matches that is not like you're playing every single day. Like in a tournament, you've got first round to the finals. But Davis Cup is like, you know, two good singles matches and a doubles match. So it's... It's it's uh it's one of those I don't know which sport I can relate it to <laughs> but it's not it's a tough uh, position that we're in but then we're also in a good position even if they're ranked number one I think we'll do pretty well with Ben and Court's been playing good doubles the last year and then Ben has been 
been in good form since last summer, and then so that's a, that's a good position that we're in. And you know, you're the captain, but you know, uh, a, t a captain in tennis specifically right. in the Davis Cup is completely yes. different from the way we look at captains, maybe yeah. in football, even yeah. in cricket, because uh, we actually then have to quantify it and even yeah. say non-playing captains. <laughs> right. So maybe you can help uh, our viewers get yeah. a bit of understanding of what the role of a captain is in the Davis Cup. No, it's really, to be honest, like. I don't think so much. Different. You're managing athletes. You're managing so that they, they, they're in a good position to compete. So the main pr place I would be finding myself in is the preparation. You know, with, with, with tennis, it's like from morning, from the breakfast to just the night before practice session, you just have to make sure that the athletes are in like a good state of mind. So it's really more dialogue because it's a one-on-one -on -one sport. You, you, you're competing with, it's not like a team sport where someone's carrying you, even though it's a Davis Cup. So it's that part where I have to be in a situation where I'm understanding the players where they are mentally and then the emotions where they are and managing that and assisting them when they need. So that one-on-one -on -one relationship is, is really key, even though it becomes an aggregated team. Event. All right, speaking of preparations, where can we expect uh, uh, the Zimbabwe team as well as Uruguay to arrive in the country? Right, I think uh, some of the juniors that I've mentioned, the last four, uh, are arriving, the, some arrived last night, and by the weekend they should be here. But the guys, I think Ben is in Europe and Courtney, they should fly in by Sunday. Mishludi is in Bulawayo right now, so I think by Saturday, the whole, uh, Sunday, sorry, the whole team should be in town. I think Uruguay should be flying in this weekend. I think they also get in on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. And then from then onwards, we'll have a practice week from Monday to Thursday uh, at our sports club, mainly because that's where the tile will be played. And then uh, Friday and Saturday is when the tile will be uh, taking place. All right. And for somebody who's watching this and thinking, all right, mm -hmm. okay, I'm interested. I want to come yeah. and support yeah. uh, Takanyi and the rest of the Zimbabwe team. Mm -hmm. You know, how yeah. do they get to the game? Where is it? <laughs> when yeah. is it? Yeah, please do come. <laughs> we, we, we need the whole country to come out there. I mean, hopefully the rain doesn't you know, disturb us in terms of that. But Arara Sports Club uh, will be starting at 9 in the morning on the Friday. And then the next day... That's at, the 4th, uh, is it? Uh, uh, the 3rd. The 3rd. The Friday yeah. the 3rd. Yeah. That's when they start. And then Saturday, I think they'll start as well at 10 o'clock in the morning. So your first day, you'll play two singles. Uh, then, then the next day you'll play uh, doubles and then two singles, the reverse singles. So a total of five matches to the max and best of three. So I think Friday and Saturday next week. So please come by. Uh, tickets a bit higher sports club. You can come pick them up at the tennis office. So And then just also we'll try to be more visual in terms of our social media and then we'll give you more information as it comes up. All right, so yeah, we're super excited for this yeah. Davis Cup tie. It's a World Group Two playoff tie. Okay. So if we win this one, what happens? We do we get promotion or no? There's another. This is the playoffs. Then yeah. you win to play one more in Group Two, then you get a promotion for the following year. Yeah. So there'll be two ties that will be played uh, in Group Two if we do well today. If not, then then you go to Group Three again. So it's uh, it's something that is we'll be looking forward to. We would like the promotion, and then it'll be good. All right, promotion as well. We're aiming for wins. The ball will take on Uruguay in that World Group 2 playoff tie. That'll be at Harara Sports Club uh, next weekend. And uh, we're joined by the newly appointed captain, uh, Takanyi Garanganga. So, yeah, uh, thank you, Takanyi, for joining us and uh, wishing you all the best with your rehabilitation uh, yeah. as well as uh, with your preparations for the team. We're talking with Candice about how important yeah. mental health is, so I'm sure you'll right. be yeah. trying to make sure that uh, our players are optimized. Yeah. But that's a wrap of your morning rush sport.